What was it about the script that pulled you in? Um, for yeah. me, what pulled me in about this script was, first of all, the diversity, just seeing different people play these characters that we know and love so, so much and seeing so many women of color in positions of power and influence. I knew that that was a powerful story and that a lot of people of a new generation will get inspired by that. Um, and also that, of course, it's a fun high school movie and that's just fun to play, that's fun to do. Everyone loves a good high school film, but that it also has so much nuance and depth to it and that it does talk about grief and serious things. Um, and that even the female friendship depicted between Capri, Capri and Darby had depth to it. There was reasons behind all of the decisions that they made. Um, I knew that was something that would resonate with a lot of people on a deeper level than just watching a high school movie. Uh, for me, what really stood out uh, when I first read this script of Darby and the Dead was one, that I would get to play a mean girl, but two, that she was dead. And that was really exciting to me. I've never played a character quite like Capri before. Um, I also put my own little camp spin on her and I really looked forward to the kind of physical aspects of this role of cheerleading and of the different stunt work and getting into a harness. Um, and I was really excited to make new friends as well. Uh, most of our cast is Gen Z and to be able to meet them and play off of them, I, they are exceptional actors and we are all so young. I, I look forward to continue growing with them in this industry. Our next question is, um, tell us about each of your characters and why they don't get along. Um, my character's name is Darby Harper. She sort of takes us through this tale, quite literally, because she is narrating to the camera a lot of the time. Um, she starts off the story being very, very close off to other, specifically other teenagers. She finds more comfort in talking to dead people, which she can do because she went through a traumatic experience when she was younger, so she has this ability. Um, and Capri and Darby used to be very best friends when they were younger, but because of this, because of her mom's passing, they just drifted apart. They were living in two completely different worlds. Um, and I think of why they don't really like each other at first is because they're judging each other prematurely. I think they're both going through a lot of the same stuff. They really want to be accepted. They want to be loved. They are, they put up this exterior that isn't quite who they are. Um, and through the story, you get to see how they discover that they're actually more similar than they think and that they could actually use each other and that they need each other's help to get to where they want to go. Was it hard pretending to hate one another? I mean, I wouldn't say it was difficult because I feel like there was so much play even in our hatred for each other, you know, and we both, we both knew how to tap into that place. But at first, especially since we had, we didn't know each other super well at the beginning and we were, we were very kind to each other. I guess, yeah, it's a little tough to just start randomly screaming at a person. I think one of the first scenes we did was an argument scene. So for me, at least it was like, I got to get to this place where we have this history and we're like, I really do hate this girl right now, you know? Yeah. So that getting to that place. Yeah. I play Capri Donahue, Capricorn Donahue, um, and I, Capri is very opinionated and she's not afraid to state her opinion, even when she maybe doesn't have to. She is head cheerleader and people expect perfection from her. And so that is what she tries to give off. But perfection is very difficult to maintain because it isn't realistic and it's very hard to connect to people who are putting on guises in this outward persona. So Capri has a really difficult time making true friends, but one of her original friends from, from childhood was Darby Harper. And after Darby's mom's passing, the ripple effects of grief have caused the two girls to, to have a, a lot of space in between them and um and it was it's really beautiful to see them work their way back to each other to to find a really strong and powerful friendship uh and although the two characters capri and darby might have hated each other in the very beginning of the film i have never hated real it is so <laughs> fun playing off of her and she's such a fantastic actress because we can have fun immediately before the scene and then we just jump right into it um 
I've gotten into my fair share of arguments. And while I won't speak for her, um, she was giving it right back. She was quick. <laughs> She's quick. Yeah, we had to give. We had to give. <laughs> what was it like filming in South Africa? Wow. Um, gosh, it was just incredible, truly. I mean, for starters, that was just a place I've always wanted to go back to, just with all of the history there and the culture and everything. And I was lucky enough to, because I was working so much during the shoot, I got to stay for like a, about a week afterwards to get to see everything. So I went to, you know, Robin Island. I went to see museums, the penguins and all types of stuff. So that was incredible. The place is just beautiful. But um, also just, I think there's something powerful in in changing an environment when you're diving into a new project because you just get transported to this whole world where all you know in that place is like what you were, are currently doing, you know? So we all got to like, I feel like it helped us dive in even deeper to our characters and to our environments and everything. Um, and it was just fun. It was just fun to be there. We all, when we had a chance, we would hang out and do cool things and yeah. Filming in South Africa was pretty, pretty much like living a dream. I mean, you wake up and the sun is like, hello. Like it's <laughs> so beautiful. Um, I got to see Table Mountain and I went to, um, there are like beautiful markets and, and um, beautiful art in South Africa. And um, what it also brought to our film was we are supposed to be filming uh, a, or we're supposed to be set in California. So to have this truly stunning backdrop and, and our school being situated on an idyllic hill uh, where you can see the, the water and the ocean um, from, from our high school, like it, it lends itself to, to believing that our, uh, to make it just bigger than life, you know, that, that our, our school and our story is just a little bit surreal, a little magical, which I really enjoy. What is the most important message in the film for each of you? Um, that's a tough one because there are just so many lessons to take away from this. Um, for me, I guess it's along the lines of acceptance. I feel like in this movie, you get to see every character is going through their own journey. There is no like character that's just doing nothing. It's all very intentional. And it's really nice to, to see them all process grief and to process acceptance and to find a place where they are living in the moment where all of them can, can be together in harmony. Because at the beginning, there's just so much animosity between all these people, so many dynamics, but it really does wrap up so beautifully in the end. Everyone is... I think who they're meant to be. So just just the lesson of acceptance and moving forward, not turning back for too much, you know, getting resolution where you need it and then moving forward with the lessons that you've learned. Mm. Um, something that I hope people take away from this film is that uh, grief um, and losing someone is something that we will all go through um, in our lifetime. And to go through it alone is simply too much of a burden for one person to bear. And I think that we have really great models in our film. Um, like uh, Derek Luke plays Ben, which is Darby's dad, who is empathetic and, and emotionally so available to his daughter uh, for when she is ready to, to speak about her mother again. And um, Asher Angel does a really beautiful job of, of, portraying what it really is like to lose someone that you love. Um, and even at like that young age, and I really admire these male role models in our film. Um, and, and the whole support also of, of, um, of the trio played by Nicole, Jenea and Kylie, uh, you know, they have their own ways of grieving. Um, but remembering that it is, just really important to bring that grief to light and speaking on it and speaking of the dead in, in the ways to remember them. It, it helps process and, and helps you to heal.